guys, good morning. I have my coffee. I really need it this morning. Couple reasons. <laughs> um, I'm rushing. I'm all rushy rushy because oh right now I've got notification sounds too. And I just it's just it's one of those. Um I'm rushing because I have to take a sip of coffee, so sorry, one moment. That's why we're here, right? Okay. This morning my daughter was very emotional and pitched a fit about having to carry her bowl from the dining room into the sink, the kitchen sink, after finishing her cereal. And so when I left, she was in tears and I was already rushy because I knew that I had reference at nine and I wanted to get in and record this before I went out there. And so I'm, I'm rushy. And as I'm leaving, I can see her little tear strained face pressed up against the glass window um, facing the garage where my car was. And of course, I felt guilty, such as the lot of all working mothers working outside the home. And so I was feeling sad about that. And then I got out to my car and I realized that I had a package in there that I had wanted to mail yesterday to Allison. It's her Christmas slash birthday socks that I knit for her and I didn't get to the post office yesterday because the meeting that I had in the late late afternoon ran late and Mike offered to take it to the post office for me today because he's home with the kids today but I had it in my car still so I had to run it back in and then I had to encounter the crying Anne I felt even guiltier and I went back out and she's waving and I just it was sad. I was sad and so I rushed here and I rushed up and I was getting all my stuff ready because I have show and tell today. Our theme is like Easter baskets and Holy Week, preparing for Easter. And I'm preparing to record this. And I realized that my webcam is doing the flickering thing again. And I really thought that I had licked it. <laughs> but apparently I have not. So I'm, I'm really hoping it's not too bad. I was doing a little bit more troubleshooting here, but I'm about to run out of time before I go on the reference desk. So I'm sorry. I'm apologizing in advance if you're watching the video um, for when it flickers. It's driving me. Honestly, I don't think it's the webcam. I think it's my computer. Um, you know, it's not like the newest model on the market here. And so I think that it's the uh, a bad um, interchange between the webcam and the machine. And I've tried a few things. It's gotten a little better, but it still does it sometimes. And um, it really seems to depend on the color of my blouse which seems odd. I don't know. But when it's a solid color, I can really notice the flickering more. Maybe it's just if I'm wearing some kind of a print, it doesn't show up as much. I don't know. But um, anyway, uh, so here I am <laughs> doing my best. I almost forgot my coffee. Thank God that didn't happen. So we're thanking God for small favors today. Uh, okay, so I wanted to touch base with you all this week. Uh, it's a short work week for me. And when I'm at home, I just don't really, um, I'm not in the same routine. So I, I rarely vlog from home. Although I, anyway, I was thinking that I would like to change that up, but it is what it is for now. Um, we're still in the regular routine whereby I blog at lunch and record these things like first thing in the morning when I get in. And so I was able to blog on Monday, nothing fun happened yesterday. I had teaching and meetings all day. And then today here I am. I have all the time to squeeze in this tea time and I wanted to show you all some stuff. So I thought it was a, a perfect day for a tea time recording, just given the nature. Okay. So I'm all over the place this morning. I'm very distracted, but that's what we're here for, right? To like comfort each other through these challenging times. So I know that you're all sympathetic. So try to settle in because I know that you're all um, you're all sending me positive prayers and thoughts and I appreciate it on a day like today so all right so our holy week kicked off with Palm Sunday and I had a very nice Palm Sunday I wore a green dress just for Palm Sunday and <laughs> I was not thinking that the liturgical color was red which I did know but I just wanted to match the palms. But, you know, of course I got there. I was like, oh, right, it's red. Our priest was wearing a red vestment. And, um, but there was like a palm display up on the altar that I matched. So I love that. And I have a picture on my um, post from Monday. If I remember, I'll put a link to that in the show notes. So we get there and uh, Father had announced, which he had mentioned at the worship committee meeting that I attended a few weeks back, that he invited the children to process up the aisle with him with their palms. And so, of course, Anne was all excited about that. And she had picked up this 
little palm that it was just the perfect size for her. It was this tiny, it was very cute. And so she had her palm, but of course announced right before father headed back and asked the children to come there with him. She announced that she didn't want to carry her palm. This is the, to the surprise of absolutely nobody. You know, and <laughs> Henry's terrible twos slash threes were much more excruciating than Anne's were, but they were like intense and short-lived relatively speaking. Anne's weren't like as intense in, at that stretch of time, but they have continued to the four and three quarter mark, almost five. They just come out every once in a while. She has these moments where are very reminiscent of the terrible twos and threes. And so I don't want to carry my palm. I said, all right, well, you, you realize in your parenting years, there are some battles that are just not worth fighting. I said, whatever you want to do. It's fine. You want to go back with father? Yes. Okay. So fine. Whatever. Take the palm or don't take the palm. And so she ended up taking the palm. And so she went back there, but complaining the whole way. And then Henry's kind of like looking behind us. And I said, do you want to go? <laughs> you know, Henry's 10. Um, and he, I could tell he was trying to see if there was any kids that were closer to his age that were going to be going. And I saw another boy and I said, look, um, there's somebody else. And so he said, oh. so he grabs his palm and goes back there. And so I'm just pleased as punch. And I'm in the aisle in the pew enjoying a few solitary moments, which is rare, you know. And your mass uh, begins and everybody comes processing down the aisle and there's all the kids <laughs> with their palms. And Henry is back walking next to father. And he just had this very like pleased expression on his face. And so I was, I was very happy about that. But at the front of the line, there is my daughter. And she has on, she matched the liturgical color. She had on a black and red dress and red leggings. And she's got this um, frozen themed little purse slung across her body in the cross body style. So the strap is going from one shoulder over to the other side of her waist. And she has this very, like she was nervous, I think. And she had this real serious expression. She was walking very like, like this. <laughs> um, just real stiff and just kind of like looking real suspiciously out of the corner of her eyes and tucked into the upper strap strap of the purse near her shoulder is the palm adorning her palm sunday outfit so the, the palm is tucked here and she so she's not carrying it at all it's just tucked just stay it was stuck there and she was walking down the aisle like that <laughs> and she got quite a few um amused stares as a result and so the kids all get up to the altar i can tell that father had coached them to bow to the altar to the tabernacle and so they get up there and half of them turn to face him and he's trying to get them to turn around and he's like, we're going to and you know, we're going to do our thing and so you know he's trying to direct them to face the tabernacle and he you know starts his bow and half the kids bow with their heads towards the tabernacle and the other half bow with their butts to the tabernacle with their heads facing the rest of the congregation and then they all scattered um and it was very very cute it um it was a really endearing start to our palm sunday and holy week the rest of the mass was really very lovely and after mass henry asked me if he could ask father about training to become an altar server and I am very, very encouraging of that. I was very excited to hear that. Just making sure my audio recorder, thank God. Thank God again for small favors. I remembered. So um, so he went up and asked Father. And so he's going to be having some training this summer after the sacramental season. And I am just pleased as punch about this. I think that it's wonderful for children to want to be more involved um, in such parish activities. And... I would have no problem with my daughter wanting to be an altar server too when the time comes. It would be very encouraging of that as well. But I think for boys, I'm um, even, it has a different element in that for them, that could be something that causes them to consider the priesthood and, you know, just being, interacting with father more and being up on the altar. And so I'm especially pleased that Henry wanted to do that for that reason. I think it's different for girls, obviously, but it's still good for them that to be more involved and to have their faith be a more active part of their lives. So I think it's good for both. Um, but for, you know, just for Henry, I just have that little in the back of my mind, like maybe 
who knows, maybe that could be a signal for a future vocation and you just want to give that seed an opportunity to grow if that's what God wants. So I was very pleased about that. So that was Palm Sunday. The rest of my Holy Week is going well. I made it to um, confession several weeks back, which was one of my Lenten resolutions. And can I tell you <laughs> what a difference that makes? I feel like everything is so much less muddied in my brain and I can hear God's voice, if you will, so much more clearly after I have availed myself of that sacrament. And I am determined to go more frequently because that makes a difference when that cleansing takes place because when you let that build up for me, when I let that build up, it really, it just causes kind of a, a spiral effect, you know, I mean, it's nothing dramatic, but I just start to notice the spiritual dryness. I just notice I have a difficult time making decisions and it just feels like I don't know what to do. I am not able to discern, you know, things as, as well. And after I go to confession, it all seems so much more clear and I feel so much lighter and happier. So it's been a good Holy Week as a result. And so I'm excited about attending the Triduum liturgies coming up and um, I'm just, I'm feeling very prayerful and good. I haven't been, you know, praying the liturgy the hours like I was hoping to do this Holy Week, but I've realized that that's, that's okay. I mean, of course it would be great to do that, but in other words, I have adopted some things and I'm doing my best to stick with them. I've been reading the 33 Days to Merciful Love passages. Um, I started the 54 Day Rosary Novena, so I've been praying my rosary. I'm going to be starting the Divine Mercy Novena on Friday. I went to confession. I've gone to adoration a few times. I've been praying with Henry more. These are all just all small things that I'm hoping will make an impact long after Lent. And so I'm going with it. <laughs> Whatever it happens to be for that particular Lent, I think it's good. And so it's been a nice, nice Holy Week. And so I've gotten a few things in that I wanted to show you before our time here. I've got a few more minutes. So I, I got the kids, you know, just a conglomeration of things for their Easter baskets. But in terms of the religious things that I got them, I thought I would show you. And I really love getting the kids handmade gifts. Uh, I really like to support handmade independent sellers like that. And so every year at Christmas and Easter for their stockings and, and Easter baskets, I try to incorporate in some um, crafts that others are talented at that I'm not talented at, which is to say the only thing I'm really talented at craft-wise is knitting and crocheting. So hand-sewn things, embroidery, painted things, rosaries, things like that. Okay, so, and books, of course. So I'll start with the book and then we'll move on to the other things. So um, I have all of these things with me. So if you're listening to the audio, you can bounce over to the video or I have photos and links in the show notes. Okay, so for Anne, I found the Saints for Girls, um, a first book for little Catholic girls. And it has about a handful, just a little bit more of saints in here, including St. Therese, St. Bernadette, and others that I cannot remember right now. Oh, here we go. St. Helena, St. Francis Cabrini, St. Elizabeth. Good stuff. Has very old-fashioned type illustrations in here. This looks kind of like Baltimore catechism-y. Um, I like it, and I'm excited to read these with her. Um, Saint stories are very important to Henry, and although I have read a few with Anne, I, we really haven't like gotten that fully going yet, so hoping that this will strike her fancy. And the other thing that I picked up for Anne is from an Etsy shop called Mary's Prayers, and she has saint medals, um, lots of jewelry, religious jewelry, things with saint medals. So I got her this necklace, and she has this package, if you will, that um, includes a saint medal of your choice, a little uh, charm with their initial on it, and a Oh, I'm noticing my camera flickering when I'm holding things up to it. So maybe that's the, that's what sets it off. And their birthstone. So I got Anne's birthstone is in uh, May, which is an emerald. I have a little A on here for her. And I chose St. Kateri for her. We're just having a St. Kateri summer. It's a theme. And so I think actually Kateri was almost her middle name. That was my choice for her middle name. And when she was born, Mike asked me if her middle name could be Therese because he just loved that name. And how could I say no to that? I mean, that's such an, an awesome name and an awesome saint. Um, but St. Kateri to me is another one of Anne's patrons as well as Therese and Anne. So, um, so I chose her and you know, we're going to her shrine this summer. And so I'm really feeling the St. Kateri vibe. So Anne is getting that in her Easter basket. 
the necklace. And of course, I can never stop buying rosaries for myself or for anybody else. So Henry has a lovely red and crystal slash white with symbolic colors for St. Maximilian Kolbe. You can see he's in the centerpiece. And Henry loves St. Maximilian Kolbe. He just asked me again to read his story. Again, we've read it I, I, dozens and dozens of times. And that is his absolute favorite saint. And so I got him this St. Maximilian Kolbe rosary made by my Allison. Rosaries by Allison on Etsy. I have her link in the show notes. And another one of my very favorite places to buy Catholic gifts um, is a shop that makes these painted wooden saint dolls. This is, of course, St. Maximilian Kolbe. The shop is called St. Luke's Brush. I have a link. This is a very talented artist. And I love how he includes all of the iconography. You can see St. Maximilian had like half of him. You can see his, um, his, his priestly, uh, his habit. And on the other side has a, like his other sleeve is his prison uniform when he was um, imprisoned in the concentration camp. And he's holding a rosary and he's holding a, um, a book that has an image of Our Lady on it because he was so devoted to her. And um, it is a beautiful likeness. I mean, it, these are amazing. They're about $30 a piece, anywhere between 30 and 35, but he will make any saint you want. He has a custom listing for I think $35 and you can send him a picture if he doesn't already have it listed and he will make that saint peg for you. They are incredible and Henry has these all on his shelf lined up. He's got several of them now and so we're adding Saint Maximilian. And I just think it's just a wonderful holy reminder for children to have in their rooms to have their favorite saints there. So those are the shops I wanted to mention going into my children's Easter baskets and we're running long and it's nine o'clock. I have to get down to the desk. So I wish you all a beautiful rest of your holy week. I hope that you have a fantastic and blessed Easter. I will be back um, on Easter Monday, but I'm teaching that day, so I don't know that I'm going to be able to blog. So it'll be either Monday or Tuesday, Easter Monday or Tuesday, that I'll be talking to you again. Write in and let me know how your Holy Week is going, what your plans for Easter are, and if you have any things coming up for the spring that you would like us to do together. Any novenas or any special prayer things or anything for me to talk about on this uh, tea time podcast or in my podcast with Christina or that you want me to write about or whatever. I am game, my friends. So write in and I will talk to you all after Sunday. Talk to you then. Bye.